I feel mighty good about myself because I can say I was one of the ones that made it through. Meet Lou. When describing his childhood, Lou reported, I was raised pretty good. Both his parents worked and he was involved in many sports and activities. But after leaving home, he had a pattern of chronic unemployment. He had moved around the Midwest over the years and was separated from his family. Eventually, he ran out of resources. Then he found Shelter House. The next thing you know, you'll be smiling, you'll be happy. You have your own place, you have, you know, your own job, you know, and you would say, I did it. I knew I could do it. Next, meet Carolyn. Carolyn had a solid childhood and family life, acquired a good education, and had established a successful employment history. Then Carolyn began struggling with untreated mental illness, and one thing led to another, and she found herself unemployed. Shelter House was there to help. Today, I, I'm going to graduate school to get my master's degree in counseling, and I'm serving on the board of directors for the Shelter House. I'm, um, I teach Sunday school at my church, and hopefully I'll be uh, teaching at the Literacy Center, and I'm a supervisor for scorers who score on the SATs. Now meet Thomas. Thomas enjoyed a childhood of scouts and Little League. He started writing at a young age while living on his family's ranch. But then, family problems and divorce started a downward spiral involving depression, alcoholism, and finally, homelessness. He had nothing but the clothes on his back. Shelter House helped him meet his basic needs and he got involved with the Shelter House writing program and culinary job training program. When the, the month from when I graduate is up, it's just, it's time to move on. With the money I've been able to save, um, I don't think I'm gonna have any problem getting a job. I have a book published, The Bullfrog Dreams of Flying, and very happy to say that the Iowa City Public Library just bought my book, so it'll be on the shelves. That's kinda cool. This is Gina. Gina was caught in a cycle of poverty. She eventually found herself living with a drug dealer and seriously questioned her future. She felt she had no choices, no options. Although she had lots of self-doubts, she also had the desire and courage to make changes, and Shelter House provided the support she needed. I got three granddaughters. I'm hoping, you know, that them seeing me coming to work every day, I'm hoping that it rub off on them and make them you know, do the right thing, you know. It's like I tell my daughter all the time, you know, it, you could get comfortable getting a little check once a month, but don't do better than that for yourself and your kids. Work to provide for your kids. Show your kids something different in life. Everybody always say, somebody got to make the change. Somebody got to make the change. Just, I, I think I'm making the change, and I just hope that they seeing it. And finally meet Randy, a veteran of the United States Army. After service, Randy chose a homeless lifestyle, moving from place to place and job to job for many years. He lived life on his own terms as he traveled the country. But Randy had some internal struggles and he attempted to ignore some long-standing family issues that plagued him. While residing under an Iowa City bridge, a VA representative offered Randy a chance for a better life. He came under there every day to convince me to move up out of there and, you know, get off the alcohol. So about three months after his constant, almost every day coming under there and, you know, encouraging me that I was a better person than that to get a, you know, give myself a break. I finally gave in and went to the shelter it's a horrendous feeling, displaced, alone. Where am I going to take a shower? How am I going to eat today? I came to the shelter the first day, a little shaky, sick. Um, it helped not have any money at the time. Um, and 
just the realization that I didn't want to do it anymore and if things were going to change, I needed to change my actions. I wanted to just give up and just say forget it and die because I tried too many times. But I had this great, this great, great case manager who said I had a lot of potential. And she was real supportive and she connected me with a lot of resources. She saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. I would work a year here and there and I'd move on to another state and just meet people, places and things. I had plenty of good jobs, you know, managers, cooks, head cooks and stuff like that, but I'd get to a point where the chaos in my brain, you know, I, because I hadn't dealt with my mental issues, post-traumatic stress, child abuse, sexual abuse as a child before the age of five, you know, there was just so much that had happened in my lifetime that I didn't deal with it. So I ran to the streets to try to run away from my own brain, but it followed me and I would get out on the streets and the responsibilities I didn't have to worry about because I didn't have them. And then if I did go into my addiction, I wasn't hurting nobody. I thought. They had this commercial in Chicago that they used to play before I left and it always be like, where will you be in the next five years? I had no idea where I would be in the next five years, let alone if I would be dead or alive. Five years, not a long time. And just to think that you don't even think you would be alive in five years, you know what I'm saying? That's just crazy within itself. but. Whatever she saw in me, I'm glad she saw it, and I'm glad to be here where I'm at right now today. I didn't have any clothes, so they had donations that they would give you if you needed them, and so I was able to get a couple of pants and a couple shirts. You can't go out and try to find a job with uh, no clothes, no clean clothes, or you have to look presentable. I couldn't see. I'm nearsighted. And so I was helped with eyeglasses. They help you with transportation, like bus passes and stuff. They help you get clothes and shoes and something to eat. We offer basic services, such as shelter in a safe, warm environment. We offer food, we offer water, things that you don't even think of if you're not homeless. On up through uh, things that could impact an individual for the rest of their lives. One thing that I'm really impressed with is that having um, some type of job training program. STAR program did the same thing with me where we go for an orientation and learn interviewing skills, how to fill out an application, developing a resume. The shelter house is not built for you to stay there and just sit around and watch the TV and just sit around and conversate and and run in and out of the door like you at home somewhere, you know. It's built for you to better yourself. I'm in the Culinary Starts program there, 12-week course, where I will finish with a serve safe certificate and be able to look for work in the restaurant or food industry in Iowa City. You're assigned a caseworker when you get there. They help run your life. If you can't, they'll help you. Not everyone in a shelter is a failure. There are people who, like myself, really want to, to um, be self-sustaining. And all we need is a hand up. It's not like a whole lot of handouts, just a hand up, you know, for just a short time. People get 90 days, and after 90 days, they have to rotate out. I like the way the shelter is structured now. You're here for reasons for a specified amount of time. There are things you must do. You must get a job or go to school. Attend our classes if we refer you to them. Meet with our counselors so that we have this plan of how you're going to exit here. And while you're here, there are certain rules you have to live by in order to get along with other people. We see a lot of people coming in and wondering, well, how did you do it? How did you do it? I say, would listen to what the shelter says, follow the rules there, then when you come out, just keep those rules as part of your life. 
you know, and you can make it here. We have to be in by nine o'clock at night. They breathalyze you every night to make sure you haven't been drinking. Normally it's a six o'clock wake up, eight o'clock we have to be back out the door. And the reason they do that is they want us to be looking for work. The contracts that we sign, especially when you're working, they want you to put your money up, so they request that you put 75% of your check up. And it's yours, you, I mean, you can take it, but they really recommend that you try to save at least 75% out of your check. So when you do decide to move and go out on your own, they just want you to have a little nest egg, to, you know, when you leave, at least you have some money saved up, you know, a substantial amount of money to where you're just not walking out the door the same way you walked in broke. Iowa City has always had a generous community. You know, people who are always willing to give, always willing to help. Very many people have looked around, seen what problems there were, and said about doing something about it. And so there is, uh, in my opinion at least, a, a fairly substantial safety net that uh, many thoughtful and generous people have created over the years that um, would provide some, some help. We churches had a, had a great experience for about five years when we decided, a number of us, to sponsor an overflow program for homeless people who couldn't fit into the shelter during the cold weather. You know, when the livestock warnings went up and people were still on the streets, uh, we were treating people worse than we were livestock. So six or seven years ago, a number of churches decided we'll be the overflow. In that stopgap program, a lot of people had their eyes open about homeless people. I think too often we say, oh, it's those folks who come here from big cities who don't want to work and, and are looking for a better life and a free handout and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's certainly not the case. These are people who don't have that safety net, who don't have the resources, perhaps the savings. These are people who could have been my next door neighbors one time or another and have had some rough times. We have engineers, we have people with uh, masters and bachelor's degrees, you know, we have a little bit of everybody. Not everybody at a shelter is an alcoholic or a drug addict. Unless you are in their shoes, and if you're, unless you're inside that house, living the life they live, you don't know why they are where they're at and how much they're struggling just to, you know, put a meal on the table or, or to get a job or even to have a, a mailbox to get mail. It's been a real eye-opening experience because I too probably had some uh, misperceptions of what a homeless person was actually like. And um, I have to admit that, you know, um, working at the beginning was kind of scary. How am I going to uh, assist people to, you know, with, with all these multitudes of problems and, and needs and uh, how, how can this, you know, how could some positive results happen? But you know, working at Shelter House, ha I, could, I see the possibilities now. Even the most uh, disabled person or the most dysfunctional person or the most down and out person, they can become self-sufficient. Shelter House gives people their dignity. It gives them a chance. How well would we cope? We're so used to our cushy, nice lives and the grocery store and the laundry machine. And what if, if all that was taken away tomorrow? How well would we cope? Shelter House is a good place to invest because it works. Look at what's happened already. Look at this place. Look at the fact that it is serving a population that can't serve itself. Look at what they're offering in terms of training and the safety net 
and a place to be and a place for kids, for heaven's sake. There are lots of these groups, so where do you spend your money? And I say, if you have it, write a big check. Write that check. Go ahead and make that support. Um, go ahead and make that contribution. But I also would encourage them to go to the shelter house and spend some time there and tour the facility and, and just have the opportunity to interact with some of the people there. I think that will make them understand that their money is being put to good use. If somebody wants to make a huge impact on somebody's life, um, a check to Shelter House Endowment will do it for a really long time. This is an opportunity to, to reach inside and help someone who's less fortunate than you. And, and um, many of us don't realize how, man, how much we have in our lives and how much help, outside help we have always available to us. There are many people who have no one. And this is a chance to help someone who can't help themselves. The shelter opens the doors. There's nothing I've found since I've been there that they won't help me with. They've been very good about taking care of me. Don't let the stigma of your own imagination or others' impression of who and what the place is about even come down yourself and check it out because they do run tours through it. There's nothing scary about it. It's just people helping people. I am Shelter House. I am Shelter House. I am Shelter House. We are Shelter House. We are Shelter House. <laughs>